we've moved to the love grotto in this house apparently Ooh. and uh <laughs> this is a it's actually got the purple shag carpet and uh Bunch of other really uh, really cool features. Anyway, there's a question from Mac C uh, about the universe, the Spider-Man ride at Universal. Now that Disney owns Marvel, Universal has to go to them if they want to add anything to Marvel Superhero Island. Uh, how was Universal able to upgrade Spider-Man last year? Well, actually, the the language in the contract uh, that there's God they, they, at some point you really have to see the master licensing agreement for Universal uh, Superhero uh, Marvel Superhero Island. It's a phone book. Is it really? And there is an individual... No human beings ever read the whole thing? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's kind of Sominix in page form. It's like, <laughs> we're part of the... <laughs> um, and there is actually language in there to the effect of they can redo the ride film based on advances in technology. You know, the whole notion is that, you know, if, with, if you think of the analogy of, uh, say, um, the Haunted Mansion, you know, the fact that over time they have added additional, whether it's, for example, the new audio effects that are in the uh, the elevator sequence, and you know how they've changed the uh, the projection technology that they're using on the uh, the singing bus from film loops right. to digital projection. It, it, it's similar language. It's the effect of look is that there are advances in technologies. The story did not fundamentally change. No, it was not. I couldn't even tell if there were any differences in yeah. the story. There may be, maybe there's a scene, but I don't well, know. Well, you know, in fact, I go good in talking with uh, Thierry Coop, the, the, the gentleman who's uh, their brilliant technical guy uh, for Universal, he was able to tease out the length of, because of the new programming with the scoops and, and such, he was actually able to tease out an extra second or so in transition for scenes. So there's a little more, actually, a little more animation really? in this version. Uh, but no, it, it's fundamentally the same, and because it is fundamentally the same, Disney doesn't have any grounds to say, "Hey, you violated it." You know, okay. surrender the character. So, so what if uh, what if you know, uh, Universal wanted to uh, add rides or add scenes that aren't currently? Is that that's a whole separate negotiation? Uh, uh, all right. Um, the the way the master licensing agreement works, in fact, there there are a couple of attractions that were, for example, added after the fact. The um, the storm spinner, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and there are a couple additional expansion pads that they could take advantage of. And if they really wanted to be about it, it's like it's in the agreement. You, you know, these are characters that we have licensed. You know, the, that you know we can make use of them. Um, and, but again, Universal and Disney are still having their back channel conversations. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's face it, I mean, you, you, you gotta understand that just in the last three weeks, for example. Disney paid a buttload of money to Paramount to outright buy, you know, the first two Iron Man films, the Thor movie. Oh, really? No, Those yeah. are now wholly owned oh, by Disney. So they're it's it's glacial pace, but they are in fact going to get everything back, and it, it may take a decade or more. Yeah. Um, but eventually. But yeah, but again, Universal Creative knows about this, and they they. You know, they're anticipating what they're going to do with Marvel Superhero Island yeah. at some point. But as of right now, you know, that because of, you know, how well Avengers has done and Iron Man and all that. Yeah, um, well keep it, yeah. Captain yeah. America and all the stuff. Yeah, yeah that, that side of the park is, is so much more busy than it's been in years previous. So it's like, well, oh, until the deal is done, let's enjoy it. Yeah. So, good. Here's a question from Jennifer T. You're a big fan of the High School Musical series, I know. Uh, uh, Jennifer's been wondering, quote, for years, why on earth the High School Musical 3 graduation doll of Ryan is wearing a kilt? He doesn't wear a kilt at any point in the film, let alone the graduation scene, and she helpfully included a photo of the uh, of Ryan. Yes, this is the, the character that Lucas Grabill played in the, the all three He's of the extremely movie. talented, by the way. He is extremely talented, and he is, in, in, in LGB parlance, he's, you know, he, he, he's... Quietly expressing for that world, and in fact, that was supposedly how consumer product. That's why he was wearing the kilt. This was, you know, a gay, young gay man, you know, showing his pride at his graduation ceremony. Really, not, not being Scottish, uh, so it's not exactly a kilt. It's more of a skirt. Um, okay, and okay. it totally got misread. It totally didn't register the way anybody intended, uh, and you suddenly had Disney consumer products. Realizing they had a somewhat controversial, you know, suddenly back backing up at, you know, uh, uh, Sharpie Evans family. Yes, they're Scottish. I, I don't know. Sure, why not? Yeah, I don't, he wears a. There was a bagpipe thing we cut out of the. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's just yeah. Stacy's happy. 